Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Mm. Good girl or boy. I can't tell the difference. Hey guys, this is Bogey again with 10 minutes of unpreparedness this time. Featuring my new tank, my new aquarium, as I promised last time. Uh, yes, that's right. I got into aquariums, guys, and I gotta tell you, it's fucking awesome. I never had one. This is the first time I set it up. I know it's a little bit too much. It's it's may, may not be the best scape. It may, may not be the best combination of, of stuff inside. But, you know, you learn as you go. You know, having fish is like raising children. Sometimes you make mistakes. You know, you drop a few. You lose some. You know, you dispose of the bodies. But then you, you know better. So next time, uh, you're smarter about it. You know, the great thing about aquariums is uh, they're very appealing to the eye, they're aesthetic, they're beautiful, uh, and uh, the, uh, the fish inside uh, uh, smells of pussy. So that's why I put this one in, in my bedroom, so it reminds me of what I'm missing in life. You know, looking at an aquarium makes you think about different things. Like, I, I wonder, what happened to my best friend from the kindergarten? You know, what happened to my favorite teacher in high school. Whatever happened to this girl that I once hit with my car and and ran away? And I came over afterwards to properly dispose of the body as you, as you do in those cases after I sobered up, but I couldn't find it, you know, and it's been bugging me ever since. Hmm. And the great thing about having fish as pets is uh, you can't really touch them. There's this barrier of glass, so it's really good for artists, like kids that don't want to get in in contact with, with anything. But if you are into that sort of thing and you want to stick your hand inside and grab some fish, I would suggest going for um, species that are also enjoying that sort of thing. Like you could get some piranhas; they'll be really happy if you stick a finger or two inside. So just to walk you through what's happening here, is I have a couple of different species. Mm, I have these otos here this is otosynchrus catfish the ones that are kind of stuck to the glass uh they are predominantly feeding on algae so they're they're sucking them off from different surfaces uh what i like to do the most is put some algae on my cock and then stick it inside and it's kind of win-win for, for for both of us uh then i have a dwarf grami over there it's a little bit shy it's just one um this is the only fish that's just one uh, inside the aquarium, but that's because you don't want to have too many dwarfs. They might get aggressive and attack you, you know. People know that. Dwarfs, you know, you, you can never go with too many. Even Game of Thrones, man. They have a dwarf. Everyone loves him. It's the best character, but they don't want to put more in it because they know it's going to be bad. They, they're afraid that something might happen, a, a dwarf riot, you know. It's one of those nightmares that we always have in life. And... Then I have uh, the Corys, those are the Corydoras. They're bottom dwellers, so they stay at the bottom. And uh, this one, this is the biggest one, I call him Martin Luther King, because I personally think that he's gonna start a revolution soon for the, the Corys to kind of go upwards in, in the tank world and, and get maybe to the middle ground. But so far, they're just stuck to the bottom. And then the rest of the fish, those are barbs, uh, tiger barbs and green tiger barbs and, and, and albino barbs and uh, I think those are uh, black ruby barbs. So just four types of barbs. And uh, they're, they're the same species, just uh, different colors. And they get along very well, unlike people of different color. That's not a problem for fish. They enjoy that shit. Then I have all kinds of plants. I have... Um, uh, some some carpeting plants that I'm trying out. So this is just new, you know, it's gonna look much better after time after the plants kind of get lush and this gets more established. But I have some uh, baby dwarf grass here and some other type of grass and other planting. I think it's some marsilia or something like this. And, um, and some tow plants and I have uh, uh, some java moss on the driftwood, all kinds of plants, just testing them out, seeing what's gonna work, what's gonna survive and then uh, kind of, you know, moving from there. I uh, put a rock inside because it's always good to have a rock in a video or in a movie. It makes more money when you put the rock inside. Uh, and that's why I actually put two rocks to kind of maximize things here. And then you have this skull here, which uh, you may think that's an alligator skull, but uh, actually that's my dog skull. 
Um, that's right, I, 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 he actually died inside this aquarium. Uh, I was giving him a bath and, you know, someone uh, texted me, you know how it is, you kind of forget about these things. And But now his body is, is good because it's in the substrate and it's giving nutrients for the plants to grow. So it's good for everyone. And actually, I was thinking maybe I, I could give you a rundown of the history of different uh, pets that I've had in my life. So when I was a kid, I first had a hamster, which was a, a mistake because you realize that hamsters are the kind of animals that... They sell in the pet stores uh, so you can feed your snakes with them. That's basically the, the only purpose. But I didn't know being a poor kid. I go, oh, that's cheap. You know, I'll get it like everything. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's no good. It's not. Don't go f always for the cheapest option. Just because a hooker is cheap, you know, doesn't mean you, you should have kids with her. That's what I'm saying. So um, I got this hamster and lived for a week or two. Was like... Where's my snake, dude? And died. Basically, it was pretty depressed. Uh, also, I was really curious about this treadmill thing. I got him the treadmill. He was running like about 24-7. I mean, that's the thing. It's like a bug of nature. I don't understand how, what happened there. How did God create uh, treadmills and hamsters in the same universe? They, they both, it, just like when they meet, every th logic collides, you know, and, and com combusts. It's, it's impossible. It, it ran this treadmill for its life, 24-7. It was running more than an anorexic feminist in the gym. It, it was impossible. Just, I was like, they should put this thing in a matrix instead of that cat deja vu thing. They should put a hamster in a, in a uh, wheel uh, just as a bug of the system. Um, then after a while, I got a, a parrot. Uh, at this point, I was in sixth grade. My biology teacher uh, was a middle-aged uh, guy. He had a lot of birds, uh, as, as a lot of pedophiles do. Um, of course, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I don't know exactly, you know, what, what he was doing with those kids in his, ho uh, in his house. But he said, you know, uh, get a bird. It's, it's cool. So I, I went to the pet store, and he gave me this advice. He said, you know, when you get the bird, you pick the one that's jumping around, flying around, and, you know, singing the most. That's going to be the healthiest one. That's great advice. So I go there and all the birds are flying around and, and jumping around. I go, wow. And then I see at the, at the bottom of the cage, there's just one bird just sitting down there, just like hunched over. And I go, wow, I, I felt sorry for it. And I got it. And little did I know that uh, I was going to um, be devastated by witnessing this bird literally commit suicide in front of me. And I, I've been telling, it's a true story. I've been telling it to a lot of friends and they always laugh. Uh, and it's been great for my career, but it really was devastating. So what happened was, first of all, um, after a week, I opened up the cage. I put the cage on my desk and, and the teacher says, you know, you can open up the cage after a week. So the bird gets acquainted with the room and then eventually with the apartment and can fly around. And so I do this and the bird kind of comes out and then makes a run for it and then falls straight from the desk to the ground and barely survives because it turns out its wings were broken. That's why it wasn't flying around the cage. So then I was walking to him like a regular dog and I didn't know it would get more depressed than that. But one day uh, I was in the house, I was looking at the bird and, and the bird was looking at me. And when I think about it, it's actually even more disturbing the fact that, that he decided to take his own life looking at me and kind of like silently judging me, casting his judgment. So basically what, what he did was he, he kind of went down with his beak under his wing and started scratching. And I was like, okay, well, you know, birds scratch, I guess, you know, you, they can get an itch. And he started scratching and then I saw blood and I realized he tore a hole and you know, it's not a big distance from his heart and he uh, died like really fast. And it's like, you know, when a, when a bird this size bleeds out, it, it doesn't take long. It's like two drops and it's dead. <laughs> so I couldn't think of anything to do. Uh, I couldn't like, you know, grab it and like duct tape it around or super glue it. I didn't come up with these great uh, ideas. So I just saw him die in, in about five seconds. And uh, I made some calls and uh, made some arrangements. We disposed of, this, of his body. I realized I've been repeating the, um, the topic of disposing bodies in this video many times. But, but that's related to having pets is disposing bodies. And uh, I disposed of his body and I scattered the ashes uh, in the bathroom and uh, all was good. 
And after many years of therapy, I finally decided to have a dog. Uh, so the ones of you who are following me know about Toby. It's the most beautiful, most amazing dog in the world. Uh, it just uh, also happens to be the most retarded creature. It really is super stupid. It's like insane. Like this dog is also super suicidal. I don't know, like the moment you let him out, it's like looking for the fastest way to die. You're not even walking him on a leash. You're walking him on a life support system. You understand? The leash is a life support. You let him go, it's at your peril. You know, it's going to end real fast. So, but, uh, but it's, he's, he's at least very cute and, and uh, girls love him. And you know, that's one of the basic reasons to have a puppy is you walk around and the girl kneels and starts stroking him and you know, you get an erection. That's how it works. And that's why it's good to have a small dog. Cause then if you have a big dog, she's stroking him, the dog gets an erection and then it's like, you feel awkward, you know, you start comparing sizes and all that. So have a small, cute dog uh, that's regardless of his intelligence level. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. And I might update you later when this tank gets more established. I'm happy that uh, the fish didn't die uh, in the course of this video. That's success. No suicide for now. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And also let me know what you want me to do next time, okay? Catch you later. See you guys.